to lecture 23 and uh, our train is about is 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 is, is about to enter the final uh, station uh, because a uh, number of lectures we would, we would have would be uh, uh, 28 All right we have 16 weeks, but we have two weeks, one week for midterm examination and one week for final examination. So we have a 14 week, and we have two lectures per week, so we have 28 lectures. Now we have number 23 lecture. When you, when you, uh, when you listen lecture, I suggest to you see or understand what I am what I am what I am uh, lecturing in three coordinate. One is what is the uh, physical interpretation that I am talking. And the other coordinate is mathematical or theoretical. Theoretical coordinate. What is the theory? What is the mathematical interpretation that we are studying now? And thirdly, what is the philosophy? What is the philosophy behind the theory and the physical interpretation? What kind of philosophy this guy is using? One philosophy is that we believe that everything we are observing is based on what we could understand using the simplest case. Because what we are handling in the lecture is a linear problem. The linear problem allows us to use principle of superposition. Superposition means that we can add up the concept we learn from the simplest case. The only thing we have to we have to uh, be careful is the, what is the uh, additional constraint or relation when we add up the, 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 the things we learned from the simplest case to interpret the complicated, more general cases. Okay, so what I have been always quoting was the simplest case in vibration, which is single degree of freedom system. Okay, so now let's draw a single degree of freedom system over here. Spring constant, viscous damping, linear damping, and of course we need the coordinate and measure the displacement of vibration because that we have interest. Of course you may select velocity instead of displacement if you are interested in velocity. Right? So depending on the physical variable you interest, you can either see the vibration in terms of receptance or the transfer function that has to do with the, uh, the ratio between acceleration and the force and the ratio between velocity and the force. So what kind of coordinate? The coordinate depends on what you interest. 
Okay. Now, what we did is we then use the free body diagram because we know the the motion that governs this kind of system. I mean, the law, I'm sorry, the law governs this kind, the motion of this kind of system is Newton's second law. And Newton's second law essentially requires us first to find out the unbalanced force. Therefore, to find this, we use the free body diagram. Right. And then, using this, and we found the equation of motion, or governing equation of motion, that look like now you are quite familiar with this equation. If we have external excitation acting over here. Okay? There are many ways to solve this equation because this is the constant coefficient, the second order differential equation. Okay? We we uh, studied how the displacement x t would behave when we have uh, transient input f of t and a steady state input f of t and extending the concept we learned we also studied what if we have the f of t has a random variable. So we look at the response in spectral density domain and we found the response to spectral density is related with the transfer function magnitude scale and the input force spectrum. Okay. Now, in the last lecture, we introduced the following. So, what if I have many single degree of freedom system? Okay. Say this is M1 and K1. For instance, this is M2. M3, M4, and this is M R K I. And suppose I am exciting this mass with distributed force, for example, over here F1, F2, F3, F4. Fi, etc. And I would like to know the response of this distributed system. This is distributed <coughs> The reason why we are using this the word distributed is because those M's and K's are distributed in a space. Okay? Depending on the motion of this, so we might have the motion like if I connect the displacement of this, uh, if I measure the displacement from the coordinate which I used on each mass. 